A young lady has called, sir. I do not see people at this hour, George. No. No, sir. Does she give a reason for wishing to see me? She says Mrs. Oliver recommended you, sir. It's about a murder she might have committed. Might have committed? You mean she does not know? This is not very satisfactory, George. But, on the other hand, it might be interesting. Help me to dress, s'il vous plaît. This way, miss. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Uh, I hear you are acquainted with Madame Oliver. You wish to see me? Sit down, I pray of you. You're Hercule Poirot? Assuredly. The famous detective? Well, some people have heard my name, oui. Now, how may I help you, mademoiselle? My manservant mentioned a murder that you might have committed. You find me amusing? No, 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 not at all, mademoiselle. But surely it is normal to know if one has committed a murder or not. But I'm not normal, can't you see that? I see only what is before me, mademoiselle. A young lady who is anxious. So, would you like to tell me about this murder that you imagine you... It was a mistake to come here. I thought you might understand. I thought you might be able to save me. Save you? But save you from what, mademoiselle? Nothing. It doesn't matter now. It's done. Besides, you're too old. old. How hurtful. No, no, no. Not at all, Mother. Girls are like that. Anyone over 35 they think is half dead. <laughs> They've no sense, girls. You must realise that. But why did you suggest that she visit me? She seemed to think there'd been a murder. Where was this? The murder? No, no. The conversation. It was here, in the lift. She was completely distraught and in need of a sympathetic ear. Well, so this morning you meet in this lift this girl who is a stranger and immediately well, she confesses to a murder? Yes. It does sound like the plot of one of my novels, doesn't it? Mm. But you see, Monsieur Poirot, I'd met her before. Last night, in fact, at a party. Upstairs in their flat. She was the third girl. The third girl? Well, you know how it is these days. One girl takes a lease on a flat. Her friend joins her in second best bedroom, paying a little less rent. Then they have to find somebody for the room that's left. The third girl, that was her. Well, the third girl. Mm. Tell to me more about this party. Well, they were making such a terrible racket. Totally impossible to work. So, I decided to join them. It was a party to celebrate the first girl's birthday. She's secretary to some businessman or other. Claudia Rees Holland. Very pretty. Very efficient. Just the sort of girl you need for a tricky job. The second girl was Frances something or other. Very arty. Works as an actress. She seemed nice enough, with little artificial. And then there was the third girl, looking somewhat left out, as if she didn't quite fit in. In fact, the only time she came to life was when the peacock arrived. But then what is this peacock? Yes, the peacock. Well, at least that's what he reminded me of. He's a painter, David Baker. Very flamboyant, quite effete. Though he was making eyes at the third girl from the moment he arrived. And this third girl, how does she call herself? Norma Restrick. I see. So this morning you meet this mademoiselle Norma Restrick in the lift and she confesses to a murder. Tell me, madame, who has been murdered? Well, she didn't say. She seemed confused and upset. So I suggested she pop over to Whitehaven Mansions and see you. Yes, sure, madame. Do you know of any murder that has taken place recently, ma'am? In this building of apartments, but that's right? I rather think I'd have noticed a murder. Monsieur Poirot, don't you? Ah, Inspector Nelson arrives. And perhaps we have our murder, Madame. 
Constable, will you tell the Inspector Nelson that Hercule Poirot is here? Yes, sir. Merci. Poirot, I'd have guessed you'd turn up. Inspector Nelson? Took her own life, clearly. Well, that is certainly the impression. Who was the unfortunate lady? Lavinia Seagram. According to the concierge who found her, she'd lived here for many years. Kept herself to herself, very few visitors, drank a lot. A very unhappy woman. Now tell me, what are you doing here? Uh, merely rendering a visit to a friend. A life so sad, huh? as was her death. Did she leave a note of suicide? It's personal. And will you permit that I examine for myself her apartment? For what reason? Curiosity only. Curiosity, eh? Well, if you... Merci. Oh, one other thing, Inspector. Did the concierge know anything more about Mademoiselle Seagram? For instance, from where did she originate, or... How did she live before she came here? Only that she used to work as a nanny. Ah, merci. Cross Edges, Long Basing, 1917. The last happy summer. A.J. Battersby. Nanny Seagram, Mary, and Mademoiselle Norman. There is the connection, huh? And Mary? Well, the mother, perhaps. The last happy summer. I feel that there is here something strange. Norma, what are you doing? Norma, Norma, Norma. Can I come in? Norma, would you like me to come and sit with you? No, I'd like to be alone. Well, unfortunately, we are stuck with you. She's in such a state. She keeps muttering something about blood. Francis, this is Norma's father, Andrew Resterick. I like to do, Francis. Claudia says you've been very kind to my daughter. <laughs> I'm grateful. Uh, she's in her room, you say? There's something troubling her very deeply. She keeps talking about dead people and blood. One of your neighbours, Nanny Seagram, has killed herself. What? Please inform me I've just come from her apartment. Perhaps Norma's already found out. Killed herself? Her old nanny? Oh, and I wonder she's behaving as she is. Poor Norma. Mm. Yes, poor Norma. The police are quite certain it was suicide. Yeah, they seem to think so. Nanny Seagram was not a happy woman. I'd better talk to her. Mm. I was there. I killed her. You haven't said this to anyone else, have you? I said something to Mrs. Oliver, I think, and to an old man I met. But no one believes me. Because it's not true. Look, I think I can help you. There are places where you can get help for these morbid thoughts. An asylum, you mean? Why on earth would you kill Nanny? Why? 
What do you mean, you were there? Her wrists were cut open. I had a knife in my hand. So what you got to do? I want to help you. Oh, please let me. I'm so sorry for all the mistakes I've made. I don't need your help. I don't need anybody's help. Norma. David, what are you doing here? I came to see you. I thought you might like to go for a walk. What's troubling you? I think I'm losing my mind. You could tell me anything, Mom. Yes, can I help you? Yes, I'm Ariadne Oliver. The the novelist. Sorry, we don't buy or sell anything at the door. I was a guest at Claudia's party the other the night. The woman who's always complaining about the noise. Only when you're dancing. I, I live directly below, you see. I think that's why Claudia invited me. I was hoping to have a word with Norma. Norma Restrick. Susie, Norma and I were having a marvellous conversation about modern fiction, and she so sweetly said she'd like to read one of my poor efforts. So I, I promised to pop one round. Mm. And here you are, popping it round. Hmm. So, you're the first girl and you're the second. Are you old friends? No. I answer Claudie's advertisement and runs to that. And Norma? Why are you so interested in Norma, Mrs Oliver? Mm, she seemed troubled about something. Do you know her well? Norma's father is my boss, Andrew Resterick. Ah, so that's how Norma happened to take a room here. He wanted you to keep a kind eye on her, I suppose. I suppose. Anyway... I'll make sure the book gets to her. So you have no idea where she is. Norma walks the streets a lot. She's a very introspective girl. She has a great uncle she's fond of. Perhaps she's gone to visit him in the country. No. Apparently, Norma doesn't go to Cross Hedges anymore. Her dear old doddery great uncle has a new friend, which of course means that Norma is no longer the centre of attention. Was that everything? Is there any more tea? The last happy summer. Oh, oh, oh. Excusez-moi. Ah, Hercule Poirot, the famous detective. She was right. You are too old. And you are? Baker. David Baker. Ah. Monsieur Baker. You are an acquaintance of Mademoiselle Restrick, are you not? You could say that. You're working for her father, I suppose. Oh, you do not like him? I've never met him. Your visitor, sir. Yes. Hello. Are you the chap from Belgium? Hercule Poirot? Are you? Sir Roderick, what a great pleasure it is to see you after all these years. Oh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. How long, how long would you say your letter wasn't specific? Ah. I feared that you might have forgotten me. But it is not to worry. I merely happened to be in the vicinity of Cross Hedges. Forgotten and... you? Not at all, dear chap. Not at all. Sit, sit down. Oh, merci. We met in France, you say? Oui, in Normandy, during the Great War. Ah, oh, what decisions we had to make, huh? You yourself, Colonel Reyes, General Abercrombie. And you, you were the little Frenchy. I was a little Belgian. Uh, oh, yes, of course, <laughs> of course. Uh, those were the days, eh, Pierrot? Uh -huh. 
Do you ever see old Abercrombie? Well, here and there, we, from time to time. Tell me, Sir Roderick, I could not help but notice in the hallway by the stairs a portrait so fine. Oh, yes, lots of those. This was a portrait of a woman so beautiful, and it seemed to me that there must have been a one time a companion piece hanging by its side. Once upon a time, not anymore. Mary couldn't stand the sight of it. Mary was my favorite niece. Her husband, Andrew, ran out on her. Must be 20 years now. Mary took it badly. Destroyed everything of hers that reminded her of him, including that damn portrait. He's back now and full of regrets. Hell is the truth learned too late. Tell me, Sir Roderick, the husband, does he live here still? Andrew, no, no, he lives in London. Although he came to see me a couple of nights ago. Yeah, stayed all evening, keeping me company, he said, while my secretary was in London. Couldn't get rid of the damn chap. Did they have children? One. Norma. And the mother? Mary Restrick has been dead for many years. Oh, Sonia. This is my secretary, Sonia. My eyes and my companion. Enchanté, mademoiselle. Hercule Poirot. Yes, I guessed as much. I read your letter. Ah. Oh. I'm afraid Sir Roderick tires easily. He doesn't normally see visitors. Ah, je suis désolé. I will detain no longer of each time. Huh? I'll show you out. Mm. No, 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 there is no need. I, I insist. Madame Restrick was a woman most striking, no? Evidently. May I ask, how did she die? I'm told she died suddenly. How oh, sad. But her daughter comes to visit her granduncle, no? Norma doesn't come here anymore. But for what reason? I have no idea. Nobody ever comes here unless they have good cause. What did you find out at Cross Hedges? Nothing. How dreadfully dull. Not at all. The fact that Poirot discovered nothing means that there is a great deal that is being concealed. What did you find out? Well, the first girl told me Norma's had a falling out with her great uncle. Told me about a new friend he has. Ah, that I can understand. And the second girl? She spoke more warmly about Norma. Francis Carey, the bohemian one. Right. No idea how to make a cup of tea. Mm. Where was the girl brought up? And you were with Mademoiselle Restrick all of the evening? It was the party. Right. Uh, she went to her room when the ice cream came out. Hurrah! Who would like ice cream? Ice cream? What a wonderful idea. Excuse me. I had a bowl and left. Didn't find anyone to talk to. Nobody seemed terribly interested in the fate of the modern novel. Well, not even the artist that you mentioned, this David Baker? Oh, he was far too busy for me. He spent all evening talking to Francis. It struck me they didn't want to be overheard by anybody. Oh, one more thing. Claudia Rees Holland, she's secretary to Andrew Restrick, Norma's father. Oh, well, then it seems that I must make an appointment to see this, Monsieur Restrick, no? What can I do? Nothing, madame. Nothing? No, nothing at all. Just to be careful, huh? Where there is murder, anything can happen. Murder? Who's been murdered? Well, Nanny Seagram, of course. So, you don't think she took her own life? No, no, no. Not for one second. Oh. <laughs> I decided to buy some new shoes. Do you approve? I like the leg. <laughs> <laughs> so he was an old war comrade of yours? Who? Oh, the frog? Never met him in my damn life. Are you sure about that? Tell me he sees old Abercrombie from time to time. <laughs> Have to dig him up first. <laughs> I think he came to ask questions about Norman, her mother. Hmm. Two nosy parkers in one day. 
You mean someone else has been here? Well, some uh, arty type called Baker came snooping around, asking questions about Norma. And he was looking for, uh, for photographs. Seems that Andrew's commissioned a portrait from him to hang next to Mary's. Oh, well, perhaps it'll put that ghost to rest. I love family photographs. <laughs> no good to me anymore. I let him take what he wanted. He seemed a harmless nut chap. Oh, Roddy, you're such an innocent. Doesn't it occur to you that he might be after Norma's money? You know, uh, since my wife died, I spent many a lonely night in your company, Mrs. Oliver. <laughs> oh, that last one was a work of genius. Lady, don't fall backwards. <laughs> I could have swore I locked that when the police were done. Thank you so much, Alf, you're a dear. I won't be long, I promise. He, Poirot, may be content to assist and do nothing. I, Oliver, am not murder. Piddlesticks. If a woman in one of my novels wanted to hide a note where it would be found. I wanted to hide a suicide note. Where someone was bound to look. Where someone was bound to look. Where someone was bound to look. Where would a woman consider an obvious place to look? given to the police in the event of my death. It's her. It's the third girl. to see a Monsieur Andrew Resterick. Hercule Poirot. Take a seat. Merci. Ticket inspection, all tickets, please. Ticket inspection, all tickets, please. I need to get off. I need to see a ticket. I'm tailing someone. Pardon, madam? I said I'm tailing someone. Not without a ticket, you're not.
Monsieur Hercule Poirot. Monsieur Esprit? You're the chap who called on Uncle Roddy, pretending to know him from the war. Ah. I wondered if he was just being polite. And I am aware, of course, that he does not care for visitors. But not in your case, of course. I'm a busy man, Poirot. State your business. I am come to talk with you about the visit rendered to me by your daughter. You've met Norma? Oh, yes, indeed. She asked me to save her. Save her? From what? Well, that I do not know. Do you? Hello. I'm afraid I can't stay very long. I have somebody coming to the studio. A portrait. Oh, but I thought uh, you said you had something you were going to show me. Norman, I want you to stop worrying about what happened to Nanny Seagram. What on earth makes you think you could kill somebody? Now, I know that you're a rather wealthy young woman means you must be careful. Sir, careful. Sir? I should go. But you'll hear from me again soon, Norma. Trust nobody. Not even me. Richard, wait. My bill, quickly. My daughter, Norma, has often needed psychiatric help since her mother died. She can get hysterical, melodramatic. The fact is, it's all my fault. Norma's mother, Mary, also found life difficult. I see. How sad. The plain truth is, I left my wife when Norma was five. I never wanted the life you see me leading now. I was always a traveller. Eat your feet. So one day, I decided to start a new life in Southern Africa. That is a story most common, no? But Mary never got over it. She became more and more disturbed. And then one day, when Norma was seven, on her seventh birthday, in fact, my wife killed herself. Sacristy? On the birthday of her child? Don't think she intended to kill herself. In fact, the letters I got from old Nanny made that pretty clear. I think she intended to be found and <sighs> saved. Now tell to me, monsieur, who was it who actually discovered the body of your wife? Norma did. Imagine the effect that had on her. Now, such an occurrence would be disgracing to her. The mind of an adult, but to that of a child. May I ask, monsieur, what it was that brought you back to England? A year ago, my brother died. Leaving no heirs, I had to return from my travels, take over the business. So, here I am, tied to a desk. So, until last year, you have not seen your daughter since the funeral of your wife? No, 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 I was up country when that happened. The letters never reached me in time. So you did not attend the funeral? So the reunion with your daughter, when it happened, must have been full of emotion for you both. Do you have children, Mr. Poirot? Mais non. And you cannot possibly imagine how painful it was. And nothing's been right with her. She's so full of rage. An urgent call for Monsieur Poirot. For me? Shall I put it through? I'll let you be private. Merci. Hello? It is I, Poirot, who speaks? It's Daphne from the Mary Shamrock Tea Rooms. I think perhaps you have the wrong number. Huh? Oh, Mrs. Oliver said I was to speak only to you. So, you're Mr. George? gave me this number. I've tracked you down, Mr. Borry. I'm to tell you something urgently. 
Tell to me what? The third girl is in danger from the peacock. The peacock? And I was to tell you that Mrs. Oliver is now tailing the peacock to his studio. I understand. Thank you very much. Nothing serious, I hope. No, 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 no. Nothing serious at all. I wish you good day, monsieur, mademoiselle. Good day. Is everything all right? Have dinner with me tonight. you were there. You were following me? Yes, I'm afraid I was. You see, I, I write books, I write detective stories, and I just got it into my head to see what it'd be like to tail a real live person in real live life. And how was it? What? Tailing a real live person. Oh, it's much harder than you think. You're probably frightfully angry, but oh, there's really no need. I'll just talk. You're at the party, weren't you? Boring everybody stiff about the decline of the modern novel. And then you're in the cafe, too. Well, don't you want to see where I was going? Don't you want to follow me all the way to the end? Why not toddle up there, hmm? Shine. Welcome to my humble abode. Oh, is this yours? Girl demanding an abortion. What do you think? Who oh dear? Ah, here already. Keen as ever, I see. Mrs. Oliver, our paths cross again. Miss Carey, I'm so sorry. I didn't recognize you at first without your... without any... Without my clothes on? Yes. <laughs> Completely naked. Mrs. Oliver kindly came round to the apartment to leave a novel for Norma to read. Did she? That was kind. What a series of coincidences. And there I was, in the tea room, when Norma and David were having a cup of coffee. Were you really? Yes, we were, as a matter of fact. Extraordinary coincidence. And then she decided to see what it would be like in real life to follow someone. And of all the people in London, she chose me. Well, that's not quite how. And how are you enjoying your slice of real life, Mrs. Oliver? Do you know, it's absolutely fascinating. Well, I don't want to take up any more of your time. Uh, can I offer you a drink? Thank you so much, but I don't drink. Oh, the lady doesn't drink. Who'd have thought it? Do you know where you are? Yes, yes, I'll be fine. Oh, your paintings are really very good. 
terribly impressive draftsmanship. Oh, and I like the title too, Girl Demanding an Abortion. I think the public will respond. Yes, sure. The concierge finally answered the telephone, sir. He hasn't seen Mrs. Oliver since earlier today when she left Borodine Court. She left in a great hurry, he says. That would be Madame Oliver now, George. Please to show her in. Come quickly, Monsieur Poirot. <laughs> Monsieur Poirot. Good morning, mademoiselle. Am I in your apartment? Oui, bien sûr. You know my doctor gave to you only the little sedative and you have slept for 14 hours? Who knows I'm here? No other person, except of course for my doctor and mon valet, Georges. You are quite safe, mademoiselle Restring. But why did you feel the need to see me about the murder of mademoiselle Sigram? You believe me then? Nobody else wants to. I have no doubt that she was murdered. But tell to me, mademoiselle, why do you feel that it was you yourself who murdered Nanny Seagram? Has anything of this nature ever happened to you before? No. I'd like to leave now. No, no, no. I implore you to stay. Uh, you came looking for my help, and that is what I am giving to you. I don't want your help. I want to go. But to go where? I can assure you, mademoiselle, there is no other place that is safe for you just now. Do you feel close to your great uncle, Sir Roderick? He used to have time for me, but now he only has time for Sonia. Ah. And how long has she been his companion? She arrived at Cross Hedges about six months ago. I see. When did Sir Roderick lose his sight? It was never good. It failed completely about ten years ago. Excuse me, sir. Parfait. Georges Montvalet is also the chef. Exceptionnel. Please tweet, mademoiselle. We need you to be strong over the next few days. Why? Just eat and we will talk some more. Catch the peacock. Tell the police in the event of my death. You've been hit on the head, Mrs. Oliver. Who are you? Who? Who? Who hit you on the head? Who are you? Ah, oh, I know who you are. You couldn't mistake those moustaches anywhere. What are you doing here? Where am I? I warned you to be careful, Cher Madame. Oh. My head aches. You've been hit with a blunt instrument, madam. And the contents of your handbag have been stolen. By the peacock. She's delirious. No, I'm not. I assure you, this is how she is. Talk to me, madam. Did you actually see the peacock strike you? This is important. She may have difficulty remembering things for a while. Nonsense! I remember everything vividly. It was a girl demanding an abortion. Who was this girl? Oh, it didn't look like that to me. 
was the second girl. There were two girls demanding abortions. Did you actually see the peacock strike your mother? No, I didn't see anything. It all flew by so quickly. Can you remember what was in your handbag? I think I'll go to sleep now. I bid you good day. Was it the peacock that flew by quickly? They jump, don't they? You have a visitor, sir. Shh, shh, Charlie. Sir Roderick Horsfield and his secretary, Sir Roderick. Indeed, sir. Oh, thank you, dearest. A great pleasure to see you, Sir Roderick. Bon voyage. Monsieur Poirot, a delight to see you again. Wonderful thing on the telephone. Rang a friend, top brass, Scotland Yard. Tell me all about you. I am gratified that you even remembered my name. Please to sit. Huh. Sonia remembered it. Little chap, big moustache. <laughs> Apparently, you're our number one sleuth. I have not been entirely unsuccessful in my profession. That's the ticket. Got a job for you. But I regret that my time it is fully occupied at the present. Looking after Norma, aren't you? I do not remember saying that. You asked questions about her? You can't fool Sonia, you see. No, indeed. Anyway, don't think you can solve the normal problem. You can't. No one can. Poor girl's had a screw loose all her life. But Norma will be fine, as long as she can hold on to her money. And why should she not hold on to her money? Because there's a nasty little blighter called David Baker. Dorps canvases. Sonia and I think he's after the money. I want you to find out as much as you can about him. I'll pay you handsomely. I will try. And in return, perhaps you might help me. What does it mean to you, the name A.J. Bethersby? Why do you ask about her? She is a woman, then. Oh, yes. Yes, she's a woman, all right. She taught Norma privately for a few months when she was a little girl. Ran her own school after that. We sent Norma there after her mother died. She couldn't stay at cross hedges, you see. Ah, yes, I see. Merci. Oh, ah, yes. Um, we're having a, a, a little uh, house party this weekend. Perhaps you'd like to come. I would be most honored. Um, do, do you have a woman in tow? No. Well, bring her along anyway. Ah. Can I rely on you, Pira? Yes, of course, Sir Roderick. Au revoir. Mademoiselle. Thank you. What is your opinion of that young lady, Georges? Well, sir, if you'll allow me, I would reply that he'd got it badly. Very badly, if I may say so, sir. It's not unusual, of course, in gentlemen of that age. Yes, George, but what of the young lady? Oh, well, sir, she's quite a definite type. There's never anything you could put your finger on, but they know what they're doing, I'd say. Oh, on the street. Well, what do you make of that? The little frog's not nearly as brainy as he thinks. <laughs> However, if he can help me stop that uh, canvas daub in his tracks, all well and good. <laughs> Who's my clever, clever man? Now, should we conclude the day's business? <laughs> I spoke with your father recently. You're working for him, is uh, that? No, 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 no. I wanted to meet him now. He told to me that he asked Mademoiselle Claudia Rees Holland for you to be the third girl. He didn't have to ask the company owns the apartment. Ah. And nannies, of course. And you and Mademoiselle Rees Holland have become friends? I have no friends. I thought I had David. Ah, uh, Monsieur Baker. You have fallen very much in love with him. No? I was just being silly. It was naive of me to confide in him. You know, Norma, you really are a lovely girl. Especially when you smile. Is my heart supposed to melt now? 
You must have thought me an easy catch. I only realised what a fool I'd been when I went to his studio. <laughs> Norma, this isn't what you think. Mademoiselle, your father told to me about the day your mother died and that she killed herself and that the tragic nature of her death has marked you deeply. I beg of you, mademoiselle, can you tell to me exactly what you remember about that day so terrible? We're late already, Norma. She was so very insistent, your mummy said, very strictly. Please, 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 just while I scream. Mummy won't mind, it's my birthday. She wants to return promptly to be ready for the party. Save her. you today mademoiselle you have not eaten you have been very hospitable monsieur Poirot but I should leave but if you left now where would you go to cross hedges perhaps yes all those happy memories well surely there were some happy times times when there was a smile on the face of the little girl a little girl who killed her own mother no mademoiselle your mother killed herself I could have saved her it was my fault for being late Nobody ever forgave me. Is that what you wanted from Nanny Seagram? Huh? Forgiveness? When was the last time that you saw Nanny Seagram? On the night she died. Claudia said she left a message to go and see her. Oh, God, Norma, I completely forgot. Miss Seagram, she popped up to see you this afternoon. She said she wanted to talk about your mother. Talk about my mother? And can you remember exactly what happened, for instance, did she open to you the door? I can't remember. No, she didn't answer the bell, but the door was open. And what did you find? I had a knife in my hand. No. Do you habitually carry a knife? It was in my drawer. I opened it and there it was, just lying there. Do you remember putting it there? No. So did you take the knife with you? What? I must have done. It wasn't there later. Mademoiselle, can you tell me exactly what you found when you entered the apartment of Mademoiselle Seagram? She's dead, isn't she? And I had a knife. Excuse me, sir. No, George, please, not just at this moment. The Inspector Nelson is here, sir. <laughs> And Mrs. Oliver. Uh, the police. Good. I want to talk to them. I want to confess. No, 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 no. Please, I beg of you, Mademoiselle. Wait for me, please. We will talk more of this. Only trust me. Madame Oliver. Inspector, you are recovered, I see. Fully, thank you. And my memory has returned. Ah. The letter. The letter? Miss Seagram's suicide note. I found it behind the mirror in her flat. To 
to be given to the police in the event of my death. Yes, but no, 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 pardon. That cannot be. Are you saying that in this letter she announced a suicide? I didn't have time to read it before it was stolen from my handbag. Oh, c'est ça. So how could you possibly know that it was a note of suicide? What else could it have been? Uh, what else, indeed? Oh, you always want to make everything so difficult. I'm getting a headache. Inspector, have you brought to me the information that I requested? You'll find everything you wanted in here. Though, what it matters now, I couldn't guess. Inspector, something has happened. It seems it wasn't suicide after all, Poirot. Ah. Results of the post-mortem indicate that Miss Seagram died of asphyxiation. Her wrists were cut after she'd stopped breathing. Sapristi. What's more, Norma Resterick's flatmate, Claudia Reese holland visited me a couple of days ago, and she told me Norma had made a clean breast of the business to her father. Ah. She also said that he believed the girl had made the same confession to you, Poirot. Just curiosity, eh? Seems you've been deceiving me. Ah, je suis désolé, but to indulge me, if you please, for one moment. Can you remember exactly when it was that the secretary to Monsieur Restrick denounced his daughter as a murderess? It was two days ago. Two days? That was when I was attacked. Do you have any idea where this girl is, Poirot? I cannot allow you in there. You can't stop me. Please, miss. I'm here. I'm Norma Restrick. I killed Nanny Seagram. Norma Restrick, I'm arresting you on a charge of murder. Thank you for trying to help me. I take a very dim view of this, Poirot. If you will, sir. The first time I clapped eyes on her, I thought the young lady had birds in her attic. Thank you very much, George. Coffee for two, if you please. Now then, there are a lot of things I'd like to know. Am I to understand that Norma Restrick has been with you all this time? Oui, bien sûr. Where else? You seem completely unconcerned at her arrest. Not at all. It is unfortunate. She would have been much more comfortable remaining here under my roof. Ah. And what is that? This answers a question that has been troubling me ever since I made a visit to Joshua Restrick Limited. And what is this fascinating question? Well, simply this. When I arrived there, Mademoiselle Claudia Rees Holland was sitting at her desk repairing her, her maquillage, and, and in front of her there was no correspondence, no files. And for the duration of my visit, the telephone it sounded only once, and that was for me, from Mademoiselle Daphne, on your behalf, from the Mary Shamrock Tea Rooms. And so I asked the good Inspector Nelson to make the inquiry. And? Joshua Restrick virtually ceased trading as a business. It is now since two years, after many years of decline. Oh, do stop. You're making my headache again, and you know that's bad for me. Cher madame, have you ever seen the girl smile? Smile? Why, yes, when she saw David Baker. And did he? Did he what? Smile at her. I and mean, did he look her in the eyes? He never took his eyes from hers. Mm. Does it matter? But of course. Well, I think he's unreliable. He was going to show Norma something at the tea rooms, but of course that never materialised. Ah. And does it still not occur to you that she might be exactly what she appears to be? I mean, criminally insane. Cher madame, if you want to know the real truth about Mademoiselle Norma Restrick, you will accompany me on a journey. Thanks to the inquiries of the good Inspector Nelson, we will meet a very old friend of hers. Would four aspirin be too much to take, I wonder? I was intrigued by your telephone call, Monsieur Poiret. I have heard of you, of course. Yes, But I should like a little more information before we talk. Yes, indeed. Eh bien, Madame Battersby, this Mademoiselle Norma Restrick rendered to me a visit, and she requested my assistance with well, some difficulties that she has She's encountered. been charged with murder. Murder? Um, so, firstly, may I ask, did you like Mademoiselle Norma Restrick when she was here as a pupil? I like all my girls. Oh, yes, of course. But what sort of girl was she? Oh, 
not scholastically brilliant, but adequate. And before, when you taught her at Cross Hedges? Well, she was very young, only five years old, and my appointment was a very brief one. Oh, for what reason? Ah, uh, there was an opportunity to set up my own school. Well, so you left your employment in the family rhetoric to set up this school? Yes. Well, that was an undertaking most audacious, no. It wasn't easy to make ends meet at first, but um, the school soon started to pay for itself. Bon. And, and tell to me, did Mademoiselle Noma Restrick ever smile? I beg your pardon? I think he means, did she seem a little neurotic? I think you're aware, Monsieur Poirot, that Norma's had to receive psychiatric assistance on more than one occasion, including while she was here. Which is hardly surprising, given her home circumstances. Her father, to whom she'd been extremely attached, left home suddenly, and, um... Well, her mother didn't cope with that very well, I think, and the tragedy of her suicide. No, since you mention it, I can't recall Norma ever smiling after the death. Her bedroom here became a shrine to her dead mother. It seems to me that she has been blaming herself all of her life. <laughs> As do most children, no? Indeed. They're not blaming their parents. <laughs> do you yourself have children, madame? I've never married, Monsieur Poirot. Oh, je suis désolé, mademoiselle. You say that she kept her room as a shrine to her mother, but you also say that she was extremely attached to her father, so there was no shrine to him? In her heart, yes. She never gave up hope that he would return, or that a letter would arrive asking her to go out and join him. It never did. In her heart, way. But in reality, in her rooms? There wasn't a single photograph of her father, if that's what you mean. Her mother destroyed every single one she could find after he left. Oh. Really, when it comes to the mother, one has to ask oneself in that house. Who was the child? <laughs> Vraiment. Who was the child indeed, huh? And you yourself could not provide her with a photograph of her father? Well, me? Well, from the photographs you took of the family, I mean. Oh, I see, of course. No. No, I couldn't. Are we done, do you think? Wait. I have all of your novels, Mrs. Oliver. <laughs> And I, I wonder if you would be so very kind as to sign my copies. I, I really would be so grateful. Oh, yes, of course. Do you have a pen? Yes. Thank you. This is thrilling. Pleasure. I see from my records that Norma's about to reach her 25th birthday. She's quite a catch for somebody, given her wealth. Mary Restrick was a wealthy heiress, and she left it all to Norma. How wealthy was she? At the time of her death, Mary Restrick's fortune was estimated at seven or eight hundred thousand pounds. And of course, there's Cross Hedges' house, too. Well, so the house does not belong to Sir Roderick? Oh, no, Sir Roderick lives there by the grace of Norma. So if by chance Mademoiselle Norma Restrick was to die? Well, half the money would go to her next of kin. Her father, um, unless she were to marry. But why only half? Mary Restrick loved Cross Hedges. She ensured that half the family money would always go back to the guardian of the estate. So if Mademoiselle Norma Restrick was not to marry, that would be? Her favorite uncle, old Sir Roderick. This Sonia woman you told me about, She's obviously hoping old Roderick will come into Norma's mother's money. Didn't you tell me Sir Roderick asked you to flush out David Baker? I said, it seems to me... I heard that you, you, madame. Would... I am thinking. It is my custom. Oh, is that all? What about? Tell to me, madame. When you entered the apartment of Nanny Seagram, against the advice that I gave to you most expressly, but let us overlook that for now. How did you gain the entry? Oh, Alf, the concierge. He'd do anything for me. He's my number one fan, he says. Oh, how gratifying. He let you in? Yes, but in fact he didn't need to. The door had been left unlocked. I see. And once inside, you what, you just discovered the letter? And I didn't tell you how. No. It was terribly clever, although I say it myself. I simply asked myself, where would a woman hide? Yes, 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 yes. But did anything else happen? Well... For a second, I had the feeling that someone was there in the apartment. But, of course, I imagined it. 
Anyway, I said to myself, where would a woman hide? Wait, 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 wait. Are you sure that there was there no other person? Does it really matter? If this is of the utmost importance, Madam. Oh, you really are the most maddening man. I couldn't say for certain one way or the other whether someone else was in the apartment. I rushed out, chasing after the third girl. Oh. Bon. All is becoming clear. You again. I've bought Miss Resterick's portrait. Well, come here. Come on. Closer. You know, Sonia thinks you're a bad egg. If that refers to me and Norma, I can assure you I have only her best interests at heart. Yes, I can see that now. You're not going to be any trouble at all. Ha ha ha! You're a good egg! The maid will see you up. And you can leave that thing here. Oh, damn. Ah, my dear Alf, this is Monsieur Poirot. Oh, Mr. Poirot. Monsieur? Tell me, you're a fan? Ah oui, naturellement. You read L.A. Ist? Ah oui, yes, I am almost sure that I have. Well, maybe you can help me. I've read it four times, and I've still got no bleeding idea who done it. <laughs> oh. No, no, it's genius. Keep them guessing, eh, Mrs. O? <laughs> uh, Monsieur Alf, tell to me a few, please. How well did you know Mademoiselle Seagram? I used to deliver her gin for her. According to Inspector Nelson, she drank a lot of gin. Huh? Well, I'll say more and more. Yeah. And since when? For instance, did her liking for the drink increase suddenly? Mm, yeah, for about the last six months. I see. And tell to me, what else did you do for her? For instance, did you post the letters for her? She very rarely received or sent letters. Ah, so for her they were memorable, perhaps. Huh? Mm. And tell to me, did you by chance post a letter for her shortly before her death? Oh, y yes, I, I did. The day before. And did you notice, of course, by chance, to whom the letter was addressed? And this is most important. Well, it did catch my eye. Ah. It was from Mr. Andrew Resterick, Resterick, no? Correct. Hmm. Did she receive many visitors? What? Well, that funny girl, Norma. Hmm. She used to be out there quite a lot. Sometimes her father, Mr. Resterick. A visitor, sir. Oh. Monsieur Baker, I was expecting you. Merci, Jean. I owe you an explanation. You owe to me nothing. I'd like you to look at this. Are you sure you that there is no need? I know what it is, and it is not I who needs to see it. I believe you've had this in your possession since we first met that day at Cross Hedges. You could have shown it to Mademoiselle Norma Restrick at the Mary Shamrock Tea Rooms, and yet you did not. She seemed so fragile. I didn't know how she might react. Monsieur Baker, Mademoiselle Norma is not her mother.
Norman. If I told you I was in love with you, would you believe me? Sometimes we see what isn't really there. Nothing happened between me and Francis. Hi, Mrs. Oliver. Oh, Francis. I do hope you've recovered. Oh, from the bump on the head. No, from the sugar seeing me in the buff. If the painting in the hall has anything to go by, Mr. Restrick's first wife was quite a looker. Of course, that was all a long time ago, as Claudia keeps reminding everyone. Perhaps he'll gain a wife, just as he loses a daughter. Who are you? I said, who are you? I'm your father, Norma. What's she doing here? Norma, are you all right? But I thought, we all thought... What did you think? Darling, Norma, please try not to get overwrought. Well, well, come to spoil another party, have you? What on earth are the police playing at, letting her out? Shut up! Ow! Norma! Norma! I'm, I'm sorry, I just... I just don't understand. The police let me go, Daddy. I'm free. That's... that's wonderful. Uncle Roddy would be so happy that you're here. Darling girl, you remind me so much of your mother. Only she were here to see you now. Who are you? Oh, my God, she's insane. Norma! Is she all right? Parfaitement. She's dealing with the memories that haunt her. But is she strong enough to go through with this? Let the game be played out. Oh, thank you. First, 
I'd like to thank you all for coming here on this special day, especially Norma, who is back with us again. And now, the reason I invited you all here, something that will surprise some of you and <laughs> uh, not others. Two weeks ago, I asked my secretary, Miss Sonia Benson, to be my wife. I, I, I was astonished to find that she accepted. <laughs> Two days ago, worried perhaps that her bridegroom might keel over. realm to accompany her to a registry office where we were married. So raise your glasses, raise your glasses ladies and gentlemen. The toast is Lady Sonia Horsfield. Lady, Lady Sonia Horsfield. Are you happy Sonia? Ha happy now? Are you? Very happy. Are you? Because you've made me the happiest man in the world. Allow me to deal with this immediately. How could we not see this coming? I am so sorry for your loss, Sir Roderick. This is indeed a tragedy, most terrible. I still can't believe it. Except, of course, for one person. And I refer to the person who had hoped for and encouraged this tragedy for a long time. Who could possibly wish Norma dead? Ah, who indeed? Huh? Perhaps you yourself, Lady Sonia. In the terms of the legacy of her mother, your new husband inherits half a portion of the fortune of Mademoiselle Norma. Or perhaps Mademoiselle Claudia, who despised her in a manner that was so obvious and who had the hope of marrying her father, who also inherits a half share of the fortune of his late wife. Or Mademoiselle Francis Carey, who had become so infatuated by the young man who was so loved by Mademoiselle Norma Restrick, Monsieur David Baker, whose love for her seemed to increase the more he discovered how wealthy she was. But in order to answer this question, it is necessary to ask another. So let us go back to the very beginning. Who wished to kill Nanny Seagram? Oh, please. This is not the time or place. Norma confessed to that. I think that's why she... And what is all this in aid of? Sir, I'd ask you to allow Monsieur Poirot to speak. Merci, Inspector Nelson. When Mademoiselle Norma Restrick rendered to me the visit, she said that she might have committed a murder and asked me to save her. Now, I would suggest that those are the words not of a murderer, but of a victim. Was Nanny Seagram murdered or was it, as the police seemed to assume too easily, the suicide? I could not be sure of the answer. But an inscription on the back of a photograph. Cross Hedges, Long Basing, 1917. The last happy summer. A.J. Bathersby. Caused me to suspect that the death was somehow connected with some trauma in the lives of Mademoiselle Norma Restrick and the Nanny Seagram. So, I made a visit to Cross Hedges and I learned there something crucial to my investigation. I made the acquaintance there of Monsieur David Baker. Why was he there? Well, according to Sir Roderick, he wanted some photographs of the family because he was about to execute a portrait of Monsieur Andrew Restrick as a young man, right? Mm. 
a man of whom he spoke to me with great cynicism and said most revealingly, I've never met him. That's a thing most strange to say, n'est-ce pas, monsieur? But I digress. Let us return to Nanny Seagram, a woman who is old, who is vulnerable, who had a problem with drink, which, according to the concierge, increased since the arrival from South Africa of Monsieur Andrew Resterick. I wondered why. Well, she was, of course, entirely dependent on the goodwill of the company Resterick for the roof over her head. But she had no need to worry. For you had reason, more son, to be grateful to her. Had you not, monsieur? For all her service to the family, yes. Oui, and also for helping you to impersonate a man who was dead. A man who was dead? The inquiries of Inspector Nelson confirmed my suspicions only yesterday. And today, I received a telegram from South Africa confirming the death of Monsieur Andrew Resterick. It is now since one year. So, Monsieur, as Mademoiselle Norma Resterick demanded of you today, I, Hercule Poirot, also demand of you. Who are you? My name is Robert Orwell. Andrew Restrick was my good friend. None of this was ever meant to end in death. You, you are an imposter? No, Rodney, no. The real Andrew Restrick has not been seen in England for 20 years. His wife, whom he abandoned, had destroyed every image of him she possessed and was now dead by her own hand. So Roderick, alas, had lost his sight, and his daughter, Mademoiselle Norma, had not seen him since she was well, five years of age. There was now only one person who could give away the game. Nanny Seagram. Threatened with eviction if she attempted to expose you, and bribed with a supply seemingly without end of gin, she had fallen in with your plan. Oh, now you are free to take over the business. Now you would sell it to the highest bidder. You're wrong, Byron. Hmm? The business was worthless. With the car, but you could not have known this before you left South Africa, for why else would you come here? I never murdered anyone. But you had the motive. Fearing that Danny Seagram was about to expose you, it was necessary perhaps to silence her. Ah, oh, but then, when Mademoiselle Norma Restrick confessed to the murder, you suddenly realized that, ah, as Sir Andrew Restrick, you were next of kin. You would now inherit half the legacy of her mother. So you stood by in silence and let her. You are now within, what, inches of becoming the millionaire. One might even say the length of the rope of the hangman. But now this fortune will not go to you, monsieur, an imposter who has been revealed, but to Sir Roderick. My husband doesn't care about that. He just wants Norma back. You monster, how can you do this? No, one second, Inspector. There has recently come to my attention some information that is new. There is one other person here who has the claim to the fortune of Mademoiselle Norma Restri. The photograph that I discovered in the apartment of Nanny Seagram was taken by the former tutor of Mademoiselle Norma Restrick, a Mademoiselle A. J. Battersby. I paid a visit to her school where she is now the principal. And I found there a woman, full of emotion, about a child who had been abandoned and a man who had deserted them both. She never gave up hope that he would return or that a letter would arrive asking her to go out and join him. It never did. And a woman, moreover, who misled me about dates. She told to me that she had moved straight from her employment as the tutor to Mademoiselle Norma Restrick at Cross Hedges into setting up her own establishment. But that was when Mademoiselle Norma was five years of age. And well, that is now since 20 years. But Meadowfield School, it was only established, it is now since 18 years. So what was she doing in the two years in between? And why had she left her employment at Cross Hedges after so brief a time? Now, I would like to ask you, Sir Roderick, to confirm my suspicions. The reason why Mademoiselle Battersby left Cross Hedges so abruptly was because she had fallen in love with Andrew Restrick and conceived by him a child. Am I correct? Yes, Poirot, you are correct. She left suddenly, disappeared for two years. C'est ça. So she went away secretly, bore the child, a girl, the half-sister to Mademoiselle Norma Restrick. Is that not so, Mademoiselle Carey? Or should I call you? 
Mademoiselle Bathosby. I grew up dreaming that one day I'd find my sister. When I found her, it was like a miracle. I knew Claudia worked for the family firm and I couldn't believe my luck when Norma moved in too. I longed to tell her she had a sister. And now she'll never know. No. In the irony, with Mademoiselle Norma gone, you have a claim that is legal to her fortune after all? That's she. Nothing can bring Norma back, can it? No. Nothing can bring back Mademoiselle Norma. Constable. Norma. You're dead. I saw you dead. You saw what you wanted to see. Messieurs, dame, it is now the time for Poirot to unveil to you the truth. When Mademoiselle Restrick drew her bath this evening, Mademoiselle Carey saw this as the opportunity irresistible of replicating the circumstances of the suicide of her mother. But knowing this was going to happen, I took a precaution. You were observed by Monsieur David Baker entering the bathroom with a pillow. Why? In order to smother her. This is risible. Why would I ever do such a thing to my sister? What revenge more sweet could you have on a man who had abandoned you than to steal the inheritance of his daughter who was legitimate? The inheritance of your half-sister that was so privileged and by you so hated. When your mother learned that Monsieur Restrick had returned to this country, she went to confront him. But she found there instead the imposter, Monsieur Robert Orwell. And most regrettably, she shared this information with you. And recognizing this as the opportunity for which you had wished so long. You, Mademoiselle Francis Carey, unbeknown to your mother, confronted the imposter, Monsieur Orwell, and insisted that he join in with your plan so terrible. You wish to steal the inheritance of Mademoiselle Norma Restrick by driving her to suicide or insanity. And in order to achieve this end, you had Monsieur Orwell install her in the building of apartments that also housed Nanny Seagram, a woman whose very presence would remind her of the guilt she felt over the suicide of her mother. You calculated the effect that this would have on our mind so fragile, and you, as the actress with aspirations, of course you would play the part of the friend so loving and so supportive, huh? And poor Mademoiselle Norma Restrain, who is now so frail, had become your prey. You, oh, of course, you were always there for her. Norma, would you let me come and sit with you? Provoking memories that were painful. Hurrah! You even plan to steal away the young man who tried to give to her existence real love and hope. But this campaign against the psyche of Mademoiselle Norma Restrick reached its climax so inglorious in the murder of Nanny Seagram. It was no accident that Mademoiselle Norma Restrick felt responsible for her murder. You orchestrated this conviction with precision. Your plan depended on two knives that were identical. The first knife you left in her room where you knew she would look. And then before the party, before Mademoiselle Restrick could reach her, you sealed the fate so brutally of Nanny Seagram, who was helpless, and left behind there the second knife. And then once you had learned that Mademoiselle Norma Restrick had discovered the body, simply you had to remove the first knife that Mademoiselle Norma had left in her drawer. And now with her mind in a state of total confusion, Mademoiselle Norma Restrick was fully convinced that she had committed the act and she was headed now perhaps towards the suicide. But when she confessed to the murder, 
the result would be the same. She would hang. And when she was released from prison this morning, there was only one option open to you. To hurry along her death. But I, Hercule Poirot, had promised to himself to save her. And the only way I could do this was to kill her before you could. I had no part in this, Poirot. Liar! In the murder of Nanny Seagram, Monsieur Non, for an affair you had provided for yourself an alibi that night. But I did wonder why someone wanted to be somewhere else in a manner so obvious on the night of the murder. That night you were here, you knew what was going to happen? Naturellement. How? Because the killer was his accomplice, Mademoiselle Francis Carey. Excuse me a moment. Can you explain why one of them decided it was necessary to attack me? Ah, well. Madame, all this hinges on a letter that was written by Nanny Seagram. She could endure the pretense that Monsieur Orwell was Monsieur Restrick, but the sheer wickedness of this new conspiracy proved too much for her. So, she wrote you a letter, did she not, Monsieur? threatening to denounce you if you did not desist and in order to protect herself from your retribution she had a copy of that letter to be read in the event of her death and told to you that she had done so so now in your eyes mademoiselle carey nanny seagram had to die and that letter had to be retrieved but madame oliver had got there first it could not have been Monsieur Orwell or Mademoiselle Claudia who had observed Madame Oliver retrieve that letter so incriminating, for they were with me. No, Mademoiselle, it was you yourself who observed her and called Monsieur Orwell to inform him of this fact. And when Mademoiselle Daphne from the Mary Shamrock Tea Rooms telephoned to me to inform me of the whereabouts of Madame Oliver, you were listening in? Oh, oui, bien sûr. I heard the click as you replaced the telephone receiver a second or two before I did. And now you knew exactly where was Madame Oliver. Oh. And now the letter could no longer get into the hands of the police. Now the conspirators were safe. Whereupon Mademoiselle Claudia denounced to the police a poor Mademoiselle Norma Restrick. He took me to dinner and asked me to do it. He said he couldn't bring himself to denounce his own flesh and blood. Oh, God, Norma, I'm so sorry. It was all his idea. Can't you see that? Oh, you're a terrible actress, Francis, and I'm a fool. I warned you that your hatred would get in the way, that you wouldn't listen. Miss... Francis... We're half-sisters. Look, David found it in Uncle Roddy's box. It's our father. I see no resemblance. What happened to my father? An accident while we were up country together. He was a good chap. I always liked Andrew. Have you nothing to say to this poor creature you tried to destroy? Is there not one impulse that is honest, human even, in your heart so black? What would you have me say? Did... Did my father ever speak of me? Well, Monsieur Poirot wants honesty. So I'll be honest. I only ever heard Andrew mention you once. He said you were the little bitch who'd get all his wife's money. I knew Andrew was rotten, but you, you... Bigger description!
So Sonia wasn't a gold digger after all. No. Nor was the peacock. How did you know? <laughs> well, because you told that to me yourself, Mother. You told me that you saw him smile at her, that he could not take his eyes from hers. And the moment I realized that he was looking for photographs of the family to prove Monsieur Orwell an imposter, well, it was then I knew that he was acting for Mademoiselle Numa and not against her. You do think of things, don't you? Oh. What a calculating mind. Tortuous, that's what I call it. Tortuous. Am I so calculating, madame? Am I the solver of puzzles with a heart that is cold? Or are we looking at the greatest of mysteries that life ever throws up? The mystery that even I, Hercule Poirot, will never be able to solve. The nature of love. There's a tear. Well, no, 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 madam. It is merely the breeze. Young lady has called, sir. I do not see people at this hour, Georges. No. No, sir. Does she give a reason for wishing to see me? She says Mrs. Oliver recommended you, sir. It's about a murder she might have committed. Might have committed? You mean she does not know? But this is not very satisfactory, Georges. But, on the other hand, it might be interesting. Help me to dress, s'il vous plaît. This way, miss. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Uh, I hear you are acquainted with Madame Oliver. You wish to see me? Sit down, I pray of you. You're Hercule Poirot? Assuredly. The famous detective? Well, some people have heard my name, oui. Now, how may I help you, mademoiselle? My manservant mentioned a murder that you might have committed. You find me amusing? No, 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 not at all, mademoiselle. But surely it is normal to know if one has committed a murder or not. But I'm not normal, can't you see that? I see only what is before me, mademoiselle. A young lady who is anxious. So, would you like to tell me about this murder that you imagine you... It was a mistake to come here. I thought you might understand. I thought you might be able to save me. Save you? But save you from what, mademoiselle? Nothing. It doesn't matter now. It's done. Besides, you're too old. Old. How hurtful. No, 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 not at all, mother. 
girls are like that. Anyone over 35 they think is half dead. They've no sense, girls. You must realise that. But why did you suggest that she visit me? She seemed to think there'd been a murder. Where was this? The murder? No, no, the conversation. It was here, in the lift. She was completely distraught and in need of a sympathetic ear. Well, so this morning you meet in this lift this girl who is a stranger and immediately well, she confesses to a murder? Yes. It does sound like the plot of one of my novels, doesn't it? Mm. But you see, Monsieur Poirot, I'd met her before. Last night, in fact, at a party. Upstairs in their flat. She was the third girl. The third girl? Well, you know how it is these days. One girl takes a lease on a flat. Her friend joins her in second best bedroom, paying a little less rent. Then they have to find somebody for the room that's left. The third girl, that was her. Oh, the third girl. Mm. Tell to me more about this party. Well, they were making such a terrible racket. Totally impossible to work. So, I decided to join them. It was a party to celebrate the first girl's birthday. She's secretary to some businessman or other. Claudia Rees Holland. Very pretty. Very efficient. Just the sort of girl you need for a tricky job. The second girl was Frances something or other. Very arty. Works as an actress. She seemed nice enough. With little artificial. And then there was the third girl, looking somewhat left out. As if she didn't quite fit in. In fact, the only time she came to life was when the peacock arrived. Pardon, what is this peacock? Yes, the peacock. Well, at least that's what he reminded me of. He's a painter, David Baker. Very flamboyant, quite effete. Though he was making eyes at the third girl from the moment he arrived. And this third girl, how does she call herself? Norma Restrick. I see. So this morning you meet this man with a Norma Restrick in the lift and she confesses to a murder. Tell me, madame, who has been murdered? Well, she didn't say. She seemed confused and upset. So I suggested she pop over to Whitehaven Mansions and see you. Sure, madame. Do you know of any murder that has taken place recently, ma'am? In this building of apartments, but that's right? I rather think I'd have noticed a murder, Monsieur Poirot, don't you? Inspector Nelson arrives. And perhaps we have our murder, mother. Constable, will you tell the Inspector Nelson that Hercule Poirot is here? Yes, sir. Merci. Poirot, I'd have guessed you'd turn up. Inspector Nelson. Took her own life, clearly. Well, that is certainly the impression. Who was the unfortunate lady? Lavinia Seagram. According to the concierge who found her, she'd lived here for many years. Kept herself to herself, very few visitors. Drank a lot. A very unhappy woman. Now tell me, what are you doing here? Uh, merely rendering a visit to a friend. A life so sad, huh? as was her death. Did she leave a note of suicide? It's personal. And will you permit that I examine for myself her apartment? For what reason? <sighs> Curiosity only. Curiosity, eh? Well, if you... Merci. Oh, one other thing, Inspector. Did the concierge know anything more about Mademoiselle Seagram? For instance, from where did she originate, or how did she live before she came here? Only that she used to work as a nanny. Ah, merci. Cross Edges, Long Basing, 1917. The Last Happy Summer. A.J. Battersby. Nanny Seagram, Mary, and Mademoiselle Norman. There is the connection, huh? And Mary? Well, the mother, perhaps. The Last Happy Summer. 
I feel that there is here something strange. Norma, what are you doing? Norma, Norma, Norma. Can I come in? Norma, would you like me to come and sit with you? No, I'd like to be alone. But unfortunately, we are stuck with you. She's in such a state. She keeps muttering something about blood. Francis, this is Norma's father, Andrew Resterick. How did you, Francis? Claudia says you've been very kind to my daughter. <laughs> I'm grateful. Uh, she's in her room, you say? There's something troubling her very deeply. She keeps talking about dead people and blood. One of your neighbours, Nanny Seagram, has killed herself. What? Police inform me it just come from her apartment. Perhaps Norma's already found out. Killed herself? Her old nanny? Oh, and I wonder she's behaving as she is. Poor Norma. Hmm. Yes, poor Norma. The police are quite certain it was suicide. Yeah, they seem to think so. Nanny Seagram was not a happy woman. Better talk to her. Hmm. I was there. I killed her. You haven't said this to anyone else, have you? I said something to Mrs. Oliver, I think, and to an old man I met. But no one believes me. Because it's not true. Look, I think I can help you. There are places where you can get help for these morbid thoughts. An asylum, you mean? Why on earth would you kill Nanny? Why? What do you mean you were there? Her wrists were cut open. I had a knife in my hand. So what are you going to do? I want to help you. Oh, please let me. I'm so sorry for all the mistakes I've made. I don't need your help. I don't need anybody's help. Norma. David, what are you doing here? I came to see you. I thought you might like to go for a walk. What's troubling you? I think I'm losing my mind. Tell me anything, Norma. Yes, can I help you? Yes, I'm Ariadne Oliver, the the novelist. Sorry, we don't buy or sell anything at the door. I was a guest at Claudia's party the other the night. The woman who's always complaining about the noise. Only when you're dancing. I I live directly below. You see, I think that's why Claudia invited me. I was hoping to have a word with Norma, Norma Restrick. Susie, Norma and I were having a marvellous conversation about modern fiction, and she so sweetly said she'd like to read one of my poor efforts. So I, I promised to pop one round. Mm. And here you are, popping it round. Mm. So, you're the first girl and you're the second. Are you old friends? No. I answer Claudie's advertisement and runs to that. And Norma? Why are you so interested in Norma, Mrs Oliver? Mm, she seemed troubled about something. Do you know her well? Norma's father is my boss, Andrew Resterick. Ah, so that's how Norma happened to take a room here. He wanted you to keep a kind eye on her, I suppose. I suppose. Anyway, 
I'll make sure the book gets to her. So you have no idea where she is? Norma walks the streets a lot. She's a very introspective girl. She has a great uncle she's fond of. Perhaps she's gone to visit him in the country. No. Apparently, Norma doesn't go to Cross Hedges anymore. Her dear old doddery great uncle has a new friend, which of course means that Norma is no longer the centre of attention. Was that everything? Is there any more tea? The last happy summer. Oh, 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 Excusez-moi. Ah, Hercule Poirot, the famous detective. She was right. You are too old. And you are? Baker. David Baker. Ah. Monsieur Baker. You are an acquaintance of Mademoiselle Rastrick, are you not? You could say that. You're working for her father, I suppose. Oh, you do not like him? I've never met him. Your visitor, sir. Yes. Hello. Are you the chap from Belgium? Hercule Poirot? Are you? Sir Roderick, what a great pleasure it is to see you after all these years. Oh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. How long, how long would you say your letter wasn't specific? Ah. I feared that you might have forgotten me. But it is not to worry. I merely happened to be in the vicinity of Cross Hedges. Forgotten you? Not at all, dear chap. Not at all. Sit, sit down. Oh, merci. We met in France, you say? Oui, in Normandy, during the Great War. Ah, what decisions we had to make, huh? You yourself, Colonel Reyes, General Abercrombie. And you, you were the little Frenchy. I was a little Belgian. Uh, oh, yes, of course, of course. <laughs> uh, those were the days, eh, Piero? Uh -huh. Do you ever see old Abercrombie? Well, here and there, we, from time to time. Tell me, Sir Roderick, I could not help but notice in the hallway by the stairs a portrait so fine. Oh, yes, lots of those. This was a portrait of a woman so beautiful. And it seemed to me that there must have been a one time a companion piece hanging by its side. Once upon a time, not anymore. Mary couldn't stand the sight of it. Mary was my favorite niece. Her husband, Andrew, ran out on her. Must be 20 years now. Mary took it badly destroyed everything of hers that reminded her of him, including that damn portrait. He's back now and full of regrets. Hell is the truth learned too late. But tell me, Sir Roderick, the husband, does he live here still? Andrew, no, no, he lives in London. Although he came to see me a couple of nights ago. Yeah, stayed all evening, keeping me company, he said, while my secretary was in London. Couldn't get rid of the damn chap. Did they have children? One, Norma. And the mother? Mary Restrick has been dead for many years. Oh, Sonia. This is my secretary, Sonia. My eyes and my companion. Enchanté, mademoiselle. Hercule Poirot. Yes, I guessed as much. I read your letter. Oh. I'm afraid Sir Roderick tires easily. He doesn't normally see visitors. Ah. Je suis désolé. I will detain no longer of his time. Huh? I'll show you out. No, 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 there is no need. I insist. I... Uh, Madame Restrick was a woman most striking, no? Evidently. May I ask, how did she die? I'm told she died suddenly. How oh, sad. But her daughter comes to visit her granduncle, no? 
Norma doesn't come here anymore. But for what reason? I have no idea. Nobody ever comes here unless they have good cause. What did you find out at Cross Hedges? Nothing. How dreadfully dull. Not at all. The fact that Poirot discovered nothing means that there is a great deal that is being concealed. What did you find out? Well, the first girl told me Norma's had a falling out with her great uncle. Told me about a new friend he has. Ah, that I can understand. And the second girl? She spoke more warmly about Norma. Francis Carey, the bohemian one. What? No idea how to make a cup of tea. Mm. Where was the girl brought up? And you were with Mademoiselle Restrick all of the evening? It was the party. Uh, she went to her room when the ice cream came out. Hurrah! Who would like ice cream? Ice cream? What a wonderful idea. Excuse me. I had a bowl then left. Didn't find anyone to talk to. Nobody seemed terribly interested in the fate of the modern novel. Well, not even the artist that you mentioned, this David Baker? Oh, he was far too busy for me. He spent all evening talking to Francis. It struck me they didn't want to be overheard by anybody. Oh, one more thing. Claudia Rees Holland, she's secretary to Andrew Restrick, Norma's father. Oh, well, then it seems that I must make an appointment to see this, Monsieur Restrick, no? What can I do? Nothing, madame. Nothing? No, nothing at all. Just to be careful, huh? Where there is murder, anything can happen. Murder? Who's been murdered? Well, Nanny Seagram, of course. So, you don't think she took her own life? No, no, no. Not for one second. Oh. <laughs> I decided to buy some new shoes. Do you approve? I like the look. <laughs> <laughs> so he was an old war comrade of yours? Who? The frog? Never met him in my damn life. Are you sure about that? Tell me he sees old Abercrombie from time to time. <laughs> Have to dig him up first. <laughs> I think he came to ask questions about Norman and her mother. Hmm. Two nosy parkers in one day. You mean someone else has been here? Well, some uh, arty type called Baker came snooping around, asking questions about Norma. And he was looking for, uh, for photographs. Seems that Andrew's commissioned a portrait from him to hang next to Mary's. Oh, well, perhaps it'll put that ghost to rest. I love family photographs. <laughs> no good to me anymore. I let him take what he wanted. He seemed a harmless enough chap. Oh, Roddy, you're such an innocent. Doesn't it occur to you that he might be after Norma's money? You know, uh, since my wife died, I spent many a lonely night in your company, Mrs. Oliver. Oh, that last one was a work of genius. Lady, don't fall backwards. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I could have swore I locked that when the police were done. Thank you so much, Alf, you're a dear. I won't be long, I promise. He, Poirot, may be content to assist and do nothing. I, Oliver, am not murder. Piddlesticks. If a woman in one of my novels wanted to hide a note where it would be found, wanted to hide a suicide note, where someone was bound to look. Someone was bound to... Where would a woman consider an obvious place to look?
be given to the police in the event of my death. It's her. It's the third girl. to see a Monsieur Andrew Resterick. Hercule Poirot. Take a seat. Merci. Ticket inspection, all tickets, please. Ticket inspection, all tickets, please. I need to get off. I need to see your ticket. I'm tailing someone. Pardon, madam? I said I'm tailing someone. Not without a ticket, you're not. Monsieur Hercule Poirot. Monsieur Esprit? You're the chap who called an Uncle Roddy, pretending to know him from the war. Ah. I wondered if he was just being polite. And I am aware, of course, that he does not care for visitors. But not in your case, of course. I'm a busy man, Poirot. State your business. I am come to talk with you about the visit rendered to me by your daughter. You've met Norma? Oh, yes, indeed. She asked me to save her. Save her? From what? With that, I do not know. Do you? Hello. Hello. I'm afraid I can't stay very long. I have somebody coming to the studio. Portrait. Oh, but I thought uh, you said you had something you were going to show me. Norma, I want you to stop worrying about what happened to Nanny Seagram. What on earth makes you think you could kill somebody? Now, I know that you're a rather wealthy young woman, which means you must be careful. Sir, careful. Sir? I should go. But you'll hear from me again soon, Norma. Trust nobody. Not even me. Waitress, wait. My bill, quickly. My daughter, Norma, has often needed psychiatric help since her mother died. She can get hysterical. Melodramatic. The fact is, it's all my fault. Norma's mother, Mary, also found life difficult. I see. 
How sad. Plain truth is, I left my 